Good morning. Aha, uh -huh. yep, it's still morning by me. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, known, of course, as the King James Scriptures. We are going to be engaging in a bit of an expository video of just seven mere verses from Proverbs chapter 1. There have been actually a few of you who have requested that um, we engage in some exposition videos of the Proverbs. <laughs> Yeah, that, those are, yeah, that would be, mm. there's a lot to the Proverbs, a lot, and we're going to see some of that. Today we are going to look at, like I said, seven verses, the first seven verses in Proverbs chapter one, okay? Um, the Lord kind of just sh showed this to me yesterday, and I, I want to share this with you, I kind of shared a little of this with a brother already, but um, this is a little bit more refined. Um, also too, very quickly, um, you come to this channel, okay, and you click on a video and there's an ad on it. I am not, this channel is not monetized. I have under a thousand subscribers. I have well under 500 subscribers, okay? I'm not monetized. If you're seeing a ad on one of these videos, that's not me, that's YouTube. Someone mentioned for the people who, um, who, who are subscribed to this channel, bless your hearts and souls, those of you who are of the Church of the Living God and who are genuinely seeking <laughs> um, to use ad blocker or whatever, whatever that is, uh, however that works, but Going forward, I guess I have to say that, that yeah, this channel is not monetized. All right? Okay, so get your authorized version of the scriptures. Um, you are expected to follow me along and I will address you as though you are following along in the scriptures. You got it? Okay. For this video, of course, going to be using two sets of scriptures. It's easier that way. Now, Proverbs chapter, chapter 1, we are going to, like I said, concentrate on the very first seven verses in Proverbs chapter 1. <laughs> to, do a, to do a complete expository video on one of the Proverbs, wow, that you talk about an undertaking, but Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. Solomon, peace, the son of peace. Okay? The second son of David and Bathsheba. Okay? The son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. To know wisdom and instruction. 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 Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Okay? To know wisdom and instruction. To know. To know wisdom and instruction. Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There were two trees in the garden, by the way. Another totally different video. <laughs> but. The tree of the knowledge, knowing, knowledge of good and evil. Look now at Genesis 3, verse 5. 
For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Of course, this is Satan tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden, okay? But the knowing there, okay? In Genesis 2 verse 9, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan tempts Eve in Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. Uh, where he's, well, in verse 1, it's like, yea, hath God said. Question what God has said, okay? But verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, up until Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, which the Lord said not to do, he said, don't eat from that tree. Okay, the first dispensation of scripture was works. Okay, someone tells you it's there is faith from the very beginning to the end, they lie and tell you. Okay, yeah, but it was works. Okay, don't eat of the tree, they ate of the tree. And the, the what Satan had said, verse 4 Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know, God know, okay, that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey. Then your eyes shall be open. See, that's what Satan gives. That's what he offers for you to open your eyes, right? Yeah, right. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Adam and Eve knew no good, no evil. They knew who? The Lord. There was no knowledge of sin because there was no disobedience until they did what the Lord said not to do. Okay? The minute they took that and... <coughs> Here we are today, okay? But the knowing, okay? The knowing. To know. Know is the sense is, is what? Knowing something in your head, right? Also, know within the context can be relation between a man and his wife. Also, know can be a, a relation. For now I know that thou will obey the word of the Lord. Okay, uh, that's a paraphrase or um, uh, uh, Brad Eyes version of what he said to Abraham uh, when he went to offer his son Isaac. Okay, the know there in that context in Genesis chapter 22 was of relationship. Okay, so know usually is defined by what? The context. But right here, to know wisdom. The fear of the Lord and instruction and instruction. But one more for no. One more for no. Now go to verse 22 in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Look what the Lord says. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. To know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Cast him out. Hence, the end of the very first dispensation. Okay? Which was works. Alright? It was works. Alright? But knowing. Okay? To know wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Okay? and understanding. Go to Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33. Job 33. Job 33 verses 14 on to verse 17. For God speaketh once, Yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. Now, check this out. Then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth 
their instruction. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Instruction. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Where it says that he may withdraw man from his purpose. Whose purpose is the Lord's? No. Our own purpose. For every way of a man is good in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but look at verse 16. Then he, who's the he? The Lord, openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Did not the Lord Jesus Christ... Let's go there. Go to Luke. Go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. You're going to see why it's not so easy to do an expository video, especially... <laughs> Luke chapter 24 verse 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself who did that the Lord the Lord verse 45 in uh, Luke chapter 24 then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Who did that? The Lord. So, when it comes to instruction, who's the ultimate source of instruction? Go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 17. Verses 16 on to verse 17. Okay? God opens man's... Uh, uh, he opens their ears and sealeth their instruction. Okay? To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Psalm 50, verses 16 on to verse 17. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. To perceive the words of understanding. To perceive the words of understanding. And what is understanding? To depart from evil. But also, understanding wisdom is also attributed to knowing something, right? Right. Go to Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35. Talking about wisdom, right? You're going to see something here. Exodus chapter 35, verses 30, on to verse, ooh, let's read to the close of the chapter. In Exodus chapter 35, beginning at verse 30, now watch this, okay? Here, again, verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Exodus 35, verse 30, on to the close of the chapter. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name, the Lord hath called by name, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Of the tribe of Judah, called someone from the tribe of Judah. Very interesting to note that in here in the book of Exodus, isn't it? <laughs> Let's continue. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God, imparting something. Okay? This is God imparting something. That's why it's not a capital S. I've addressed this in another video before. Um, the 
first John 1 through 6 expository video. If I can remember, I'll try to put it in this one, okay? But this is why that is not a capital S, because God is the one who is imparting that spirit, okay? And he hath filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom. So now right away, look at this. The Lord called this guy, who? Bezalel, okay? And he also did what? He called him and also did what? Filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom wisdom in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship very interesting look what's there wisdom understanding and knowledge and 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 in all manner of workmanship so what happens before the workmanship the Spirit of God fills this guy with what? Wisdom. What is wisdom? He also gives him understanding. Because what? In verse 30, he was called. And in verse 31, he was filled. Yeah. Yeah. And in knowledge. Knowing something. And in all manner of workmanship. Once the Lord saves you, and you are sealed unto the day of redemption, of course, because of him saving you, you are called on to good works for your rewards in the kingdom of heaven, not to maintain your salvation. Okay? Okay, you're not just to sit there idly on your duff doing nothing. Okay? The Lord will have you to do good works, not, look at my lips, not for your salvation, not for you to stay saved, but as an ambassador of the Lord. You see that? And to devise curious works. To work in gold and in silver and in brass. And in cutting of stones to set them. And in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. Now these are all works, aren't they? Well, obviously. Well, what came before these? Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And how did that come to the Bazi, uh, this uh, Bezalel? He was called, and he was also filled first with those things, and then this comes after it, see? Will you get that one right? Yeah, let's continue. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach. Put in his heart. Not his head. In his heart. That he may teach. Both he and Aholib, the son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan. Them hath he filled with wisdom of heart. To work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver, even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work. Mm. So looking at this again, dear friends, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge and all manner of workmanship in verse 31. But you see, you gotta take into account verse 30, that, and Moses said unto the children of Israel, see, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel of the tribe of Judah. There's nothing to that, of course. <laughs> of course. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. We see God's heavy involvement in this, don't we? Don't we? And now go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Chill. We're not going to read the whole chapter. 
you might be thinking, oh, great. No matter how, they, no matter how Brad uh, is called to do certain things, he'll probably read this whole thing, won't he? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, let's refresh our memories. We're only on verse 2 still in uh, Proverbs chapter 1, by the way. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Oh, did I say chapter 28? I did, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I'm sorry, brethren. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding and knowing and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. Wise men and understanding. Men who are wise are what? Men who fear the Lord. And understanding who are separate, holy, other. Depart from evil. Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And look at verse, go to now to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Oh, verse 5 and 6. Now let's make it 5 on the verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 on the verse 7. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. See, the Jews in the promised land were to be the equivalent of we as the church of the living God are today, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentile. Because remember, us Gentiles were grafted into their tree. But see, back here under the law, the principle was he called out the Jew to be his ensample, his emissary, his ambassador. You see that? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom, fear of the Lord, and your understanding in the sight of the nations, departing from evil. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Does the lost world say that of the church of the living God today? For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. The words of understanding. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Verse 2. Or verse 3, excuse me. To receive the instruction of wisdom. The instruction of wisdom. The instruction of wisdom. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. This, this one. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, okay? To receive the instruction of wisdom, and when you have that, the instruction of wisdom, the instruction of the fear of the Lord, and how do you get that? Through the scripture, okay? Justice. And oh, judgment. No. No. <laughs> and equity. To receive the instruction of wisdom, comma, justice, and judgment, and equity. Verse 4. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. 
Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 10. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So right there, simple is equated with making wise. And what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Remember that. Remember that. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and right all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than, the, than honey and the honeycomb. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? In verse 4, to give subtlety to the simple. Someone who is simple, it's not just someone who has only a chair and a desk or something. Okay? Yes, yeah, simple can mean that. But in context, the simple, someone who doesn't know, someone who doesn't have the fear of the Lord, someone who is oblivious to this. Okay? To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion knowledge and discretion. But when we're looking here back in Psalm 19, go now to Psalm 116. Psalm 116, okay? Psalm 116, verse 6. Psalm 116, verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple, I was brought low, and he helped me. The Lord preserveth the simple. How does he do that? Through the fear of the Lord. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, broken, and he helped me. And Psalm 119, Psalm 119, we're going to be in Psalm 119 quite a bit today. That is Psalm 119, yes. Psalm 119, verse 30. I have chosen the way of, the, of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, verse 31 in Psalm 119. O Lord, put me not to shame. And now with that, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Remember how we read in Psalm 19, more to be treasured than gold, yea, than fine gold, and that sweeter than the honeycomb. Right? Remember that? Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know, that, to know what was in thine heart. It's not that he didn't know what was in their heart. That we might know 
No what? That there is none good. No, not wrong. Uh, not one. There is none that doeth righteousness. No, not one. That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceed that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And of course. Our Lord in the temptation when Satan was trying to tempt him. <laughs> Satan trying to tempt God the Father. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's echoed in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And also, when you go to Job chapter 23, Job chapter 23, okay? Job chapter 23, verse 12. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed thy, the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. The words of his mouth. The authorized version of the scriptures. That's where we have the words of his mouth. Okay? Okay? Now, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Go to verse 5 now. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 1 on to verse 2. And it shall come to pass... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. A wise man will hear. Who is a wise man? Someone who fears the Lord. See, you can have knowledge, but not have the fear of the Lord. You have the fear of the Lord, he's going to give you knowledge. True knowledge that comes from him through the scriptures. Because he will reveal these things, reveal the hidden truths of scripture. We're going to touch on that a little bit more as we continue, okay? A wise man will hear. A wise man will hear. One who fears the Lord will hear. Okay? Now, while in Deuteronomy chapter 28, look at verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now today, okay, when you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are sealed, okay? You cannot become unsealed. You cannot lose your salvation, okay? That today, in this dispensation, that cannot happen. Under the law, yeah, you could lose your salvation. Eternal security was not there. In the time of Jacob's trouble, yeah, you can lose your salvation. Eternal security is not there. Okay? Okay? All right? Again, people saying that eternal security was all from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation, they're lying to you. Okay? Okay? Before an instruction in righteousness for us today, which obviously, if you haven't figured out, this is already, that's what this is about, um... You go ahead and of the church of the living God 
and disregard to align your life according to the scripture? How are your life going uh, right now? Huh? Because you're doing that. Huh? Verse 45 in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Look at this. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he command which he command thee to hand one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the Lord, uh, in the day of the Lord Jesus for us today you mess around on the Lord you refuse his instruction. You refuse his instruction. You hate instruction. And you cast it behind your back. If you are saved of the church of the living God, you're going to be chastened. If you still resist, he's going to kill you. That's why there are so many out there who are obviously fake and not of the church of the living God and yet continue. And spread heresy and lies. Something to remember about this, brethren. Okay? Okay? A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, Beth. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning psalm 119 beth that's verses 9 on to verse 16. wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word uh, uh what was that in uh verse six uh, verse four to give subtlety to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion a wise man will hear faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and will increase in learning. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. We're back in Psalm 119, Beth, by the way. <laughs> thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Where are his statutes? With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. How valuable unto thee, church of the living God, are the scriptures to you. A passing fancy? Do you esteem these more than your necessary food? Huh? I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. His testimonies. Where is testimonies? Come on, we know this. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Mm, beautiful. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding will shall attain unto wise counsel. A man of understanding is someone who departs from evil, who seeks to live his life separate, other. Okay? Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Okay? <clears throat> wise man will hear an increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. 
His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. His righteousness endureth forever. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter five. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. Uh, listen there, Jack. If you, if the Lord saves you, or you are of the Church of the Living God, your life is going to change. Not at gunpoint, but your life is going to change. Our Lord does not want you to remain as of the world. Okay? And you got these twits telling you it doesn't matter okay if you're saved born again yeah you're going to heaven but your testimony is going to be destroyed your life is going to be a mess and not only that you're bringing reproach upon the Lord by the way you live oh it doesn't matter 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 Therefore, if, uh, at verse 17, again, of course. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Do you, did you see, of course, the ministry of reconciliation? Okay? Okay? To wit, that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And here it is. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Back to Psalm 111, verse 3. His work is honorable and glorious. Do you get it? You got that. I know you did. And his righteousness endureth forever. You got that one, didn't you? Yeah, praise the Lord. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Okay, now let's let's continue here in Psalm 111. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. How does he make his works to be remembered today? In his ambassadors. Through the scriptures, the word of reconciliation. <clears throat> he hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shewed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. What did I get? No, verse 9. Okay. The works of his hands are verity and judgment, and all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. That's why when you have someone calling themselves reverend so-and-so, that's a sin. That's a sin. You know, the, the great reverend or the holy reverend so-and-so, that's a sin. Because what does this say? Holy and reverend is his name. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Okay? Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Oh, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Matthew chapter 10. Come on, fingers work. Matthew chapter 10, 
Verse 6. Uh, actually, let's read verses 5 and 6 in Matthew chapter 10. The, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Verse 24. But he answered and said, this is Jesus speaking, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Salvation is of the Jew. It was to the Jew first and also unto the Gentile. Okay? He sent redemption unto his people. It was to the Jew first. And we, because the Jew has rejected, okay, as a whole, we are grafted into their tree to make them jealous. Okay? 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 And go now to Philippians chapter 2. You knew we would have to do this. But, but oh, oh, before we go to Philippians, go to Acts. Acts chapter 4. Okay? Acts chapter 4. Very humid in, in this place. Acts chapter 4. Uh, a wise man will... Hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. In Psalm 111, verse 9, He hath sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse, oh, let's read on to verse 12. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. Work out what God has put in. Work it out. Not save yourself. Work out what he has put in. Okay. And verse 10 in Psalm 111. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Look at that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding, departing from evil, have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. His commandments. There are commandments for us today to keep during the time of the Gentiles in this dispensation. Yes, yes. But a good understanding, okay? Uh, back to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. What is that? Verses 97 on to verse 104. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Wiser than mine enemies. I fear the Lord. Our enemies, brethren, they don't. Plain and simple. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. 
I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. A wise man will hear an increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Who taught him? Who teaches you? How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Ooh, you gotta love that one. You gotta love that one. Amen. <laughs> you gotta love that. Through thy precepts I get understanding departing from evil. Therefore I hate every false way. Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great. I hate Catholicism. I hate Catholicism. And all her daughters. I hate it. You of the Church of the Living God, you ought to hate Catholicism as well. Look what they have done and are doing. And you see where it says, I'm, I hear in verse 5 in Proverbs 1, And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Check this out. Check this out. Okay. Go to Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 17. Our Lord rebuking the Laodicean church the people not the building because thou sayest i am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, buy the truth, and sell it not. Buy the truth, what does that mean? Uh, get a copy of the authorized version of the scripture. Okay? Now verse 6. To understand a proverb in uh, Proverbs chapter 1. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, their dark sayings, to understand a proverb, and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Dark sayings, huh? What are dark sayings? Well, go to Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40. Genesis, to understand a proverb and the interpretation. The interpretation. Remember, no prophecy of the scripture is given, um, is of any private interpretation. You know, kind of like what Catholics teach, that uh, you need them to interpret the scripture for you. <laughs> or you see some of these guys like that devil, from those devils at um, uh, Shepherd's Chapel, where they will send you this CD of their hidden teachings or something like that. That you know you need to pay them money for, so you they can reveal this hidden truth to you that not anyone else knows. Yeah, interpretation, huh? Where do interpretations come from? Where do true interpretations come from? Genesis chapter forty, verses six on to verse eight. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. 
And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Oh, that's just talking about dreams, Brad. <laughs> Some of you devils would actually say that. Yeah, uh, yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. But, okay, interpretate, do not interpretations belong to God? Oh, that's just relegated to dreams, right? One who is void of logic and reason by def as defined... And the dictionary is an idiot. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. That's only about dreams. <laughs> John 16. John 16. John 16. <clears throat> Verse 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. And the Lord is that spirit. Remember, he opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. He expounded to them the scriptures. Um, do not interpretations belong unto God? The spirit of truth and the Lord is that spirit. It's not just the dreams, you twits. And I'm not calling you Church of the Living God twits. I'm talking to them devils. Okay? Okay? And of course, John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Okay? Okay, we got that. Now go back to Psalm 119. As you've noticed, we've hit Psalm 119 a few times today. Psalm 119, none, but we are only going to look at one particular verse in Psalm 119, none. And that is verse 105. Okay? Talking about, and the interpret, okay, to understand the interpretation of the word, to, eh, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, the words of those who fear the Lord, and their dark sayings. Okay, their dark sayings, but if here, uh, Psalm 119, none, verse uh, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Okay, if the word, if thy word is a lamp and a light, what's this dark saying thing? Uh, go to Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Okay? Psalm 78. You're going to see something here. Psalm 78, verses 1 under verse 3. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. The words of my mouth. Okay? Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Verse 5 in Proverbs chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Remember how our Lord says, Unto you it is given um, to know these things, but unto them it, uh, uh, in parables, that having eyes they may not see. And having ears they may not hear, and having hearts they won't understand that they might be converted. 
Ooh. So the dark sayings. Look at verse one in Psalm seventy-eight. Look at the look at look. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ear to my word, to the words of my mouth. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We are listening for what? Come up hither, right? Uh huh. Okay. But the dark sayings. But yet, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Stay with me. Stay with me, okay? Now go to John. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, okay? John chapter 1. What are these dark saints? This is something that my one brother from um, <laughs> from Croatia would, uh, would ask um, and praise the Lord for him. <laughs> I love you, brother. John chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 9. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Okay? In him was life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, talking about the Holy Ghost, okay? He is the Creator. The Lord Jesus Christ has given you life. Uh, there are a lot of you out there who don't want to accept that. But he created you. He gave you life. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Have any of you had the unfortunate privilege to see the eyes of someone who is actually dead, a corpse? Have you ever seen the eyes of a dead man? You look in even devil's eyes. You look into their eyes. You can see a little light there. You're alive. Even those you, you, you wicked devils who have dead eyes, but yet there is still a light there. Meaning that you are alive because your spirit and soul are housed within your body, the flesh. Okay. When you look into the eyes of someone who is dead, whose spirit and soul psst, are gone, there ain't no light in those eyeballs. And those of you who have seen that, you know what I'm talking about. Hmm? Think about, here's another. Have you ever looked in the eyes of your pet who you had to put down? How their eyes go big and there ain't no light in there? Okay? Same principle. But it says here, okay? But it says here, in him was life because he gives the light. And the life was the light of men. Again, if you've never seen the eyes of a dead body, the eyes of a man, a dead man's eyes, of a corpse, there's no light in there. Okay? Go, go up to someone close to you. Look them in the eye. You'll, you'll see light there. Even though their eyes might be dead, like the dead eyes of, of, of a con man. Every pun intended there, by the way. Okay? Okay? Dead eyes. But yet, there's still light there. Because your spirit and soul are still within your body. Okay? Let's continue this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear, to bear witness of the capital L light. Referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light, 
but was sent bear to witness, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. That does not mean that brr, every man is saved. No. This means simply that Jesus Christ is God the Father and created you. You ain't alive today because of some freak accident. No. No. The Lord gave you life. The Lord created you. He gave you life. The only reason why you're alive today, dear friend, it's because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has allowed it to be so. Hence, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Whether you want to accept this or not, Jesus Christ is God the Father. He created you. Okay? He is the creator. Okay? He created you. He gave you life. You have the light in your eyes. Your spirit and soul are within your body. Okay? Okay? But now, let's continue. Let's continue. Go back. Um, now, where were we? Where were we? Go to John chapter 3. Now, notice this in verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness... And the darkness comprehended it not. Comprehended it not. Excuse me. John chapter 3, verses 18 under verse 21. I already kind of covered this a little bit, but it ties in to this. Okay? It does. It ties into this. Okay? He that believeth on him is not condemned. Oh, uh, John chapter 3, verses 18 under verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There's only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Okay? That's, that name is Jesus Christ. Okay? And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And it says here, And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Their deeds were evil. Yeah, now you get, yeah, right? Let's continue. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. You do evil. You hate your own, you 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 hate your own spirit and soul that the Lord gave you. You hate yourself if you do evil. And you do evil, contrary to the Scripture. Um, you hate the Lord. You hate the Lord. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be, mani be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Oh, oh boy. Y yeah, you got that, right? Why, again... Why do people avoid the scriptures? Because their deeds are evil. And guess what, cousin? This is going to shed light all over you. And it's going to show you your sin. That's why a lot of you hate it. And those of you of the Church of the Living God who have made the choice to give yourself over onto your sin, you know better. But you want to avoid that for right now unless you get cut, right? Or pricked, excuse me, pricked in your heart, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Now go to Matthew chapter 6. Now I've, I already covered this, but I, I, it, has to be, it has to be covered again. 
Okay, I'm not as in depth as the previous video, but Matthew chapter 6, okay, verses 19 on to verse 23. Okay, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We're not going to expound on this because I already got a video expounding on this. Okay, I'll link it in the video in the description box. Okay. <clears throat> the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness. How great is that uh, darkness? See, the scripture, the word of truth, is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. The scripture came from God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is that spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost. So where it says here, and their dark saying, It almost sounds like as if you have to have that light within you, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ, to understand a proverb. You don't say. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Remember, the, 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 the devils out there here online, they got knowledge, but they don't have wisdom, okay? You have wisdom, you're going to have the purest of knowledge because you're going to have the mind of Christ. It, that, that don't mean that you're going to know everything. Of course not, no. But you will have the Lord himself, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you. And He, the Spirit of truth, the Lord is that Spirit, will guide you into all truth. Do not interpretations belong unto God? What are you going to do? Huh? You're going to go to uh, a Bible program, huh? a study Bible? Hmm? Huh? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Note that, the spirit which is of God. Remember what we looked at in Exodus? How the Lord called, okay? And then he gave wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, okay? That's nothing to do with Calvinism, okay? Shh! about that okay but he called and he gave okay who answers that call by the way i hope you have okay but the spirit now we have not received we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god what he has given us okay he has given us himself okay that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Holy Ghost, spiritual things. Holy Ghost. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that Spirit, dwelling within you who are saved. Yes, you lost, you devil, coadjutor, this doesn't apply to you. You know about this, but it's not here, because you lost. See, so comparing spiritual things, Spirit of God that uh, has been given to you, okay, sealed unto the day of redemption, with spiritual things. To 
To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Verse 14 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, capital S, for they are foolishness, foolishness. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Foolishness is one who lives as if there is no God. Who does things as if there is no God. <laughs> For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. They don't have the spirit. See, these devils can clean the pages. But they can't dive deep. Why? Because they're going off of their church fathers. They're Jesuit church fathers. Have you ever seen a Catholic, like the, that Catholic answer stuff? I unfortunately, a while ago, like maybe a year or two ago, did watch some of that stuff. It was excruciating to watch. It's like, oh, wow, you are so spiritually blind, you lost devil. This is painful to watch these Catholic guys to try to expound on the things of Scripture by going off with their Jesuit fathers. It's painful. It's painful. They have a head knowledge. But they have not a knowledge because of the fear of the Lord. They have the knowledge, but they don't have a knowledge because they have the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord will give true knowledge. Because you'll have the Holy Ghost. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit living within you himself. So... They're dark sayings. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he is he himself is judged of no man. Isn't this beautiful? For who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And that, 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 that doesn't mean that he's revealing everything to you, of course. But we have the mind of Christ. You're saved. God is in you. So, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, the words of those who fear the Lord, and their dark sayings, okay, Those who are lost, the fake, there's these, the sayings of Scripture are dark unto them because they have not that light, capital L, dwelling within them. Even though that light in the eyes, meaning that they're alive, they have, yes, but they ain't saved, see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we're not done on this yet. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6, on to verse 11. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Have you, under, have you ever wondered why so many people spend all their time attacking and don't bother to get into any, any scriptural teaching, but just their whole thing is about attacking people? To understand a proverb and the interpretation and the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Why is that? Because they're in darkness. 
they ain't saved. That's all they can do. Like I said, you, you see some of these guys who try to do teaching. Oh, it's brutal to try to watch. There's one that um, I was sent a link to. It's like, what do you think of this guy? And I was, I, I watched, I watched a little of it, brother, but it's like, oh, I, I can't, I can't. You know, you know, okay? Why is that? They're in darkness. The scriptures are dark unto them. Because while they have the light of life, they don't have the light, capital L, light, living within them, see. Hence, that's what it means by dark sayings. But, be not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, and now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And you know how our Lord said in John about um, he who loveth the light come to the light that his deeds may be uh, revealed that they are wrought in God. Self-examination. Okay? Hold, hold up. <clears throat> For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. Okay? Go back to go back to John chapter three. Go back to John chapter three. Let's look at that. Okay? Let's look at that. John chapter three. Not there, Brad. John chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 21 again. And this, and this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Someone who isn't truly saved, obviously, but it's not going to come to the scriptures to examine themselves, that their works may be wrought, manifest that they are wrought in God. No, they will use this as merely as a weapon to attack people with. And not to build up, not to edify, because that's all they are capable of, brethren. That's all they are capable of. Teach them something, there, guys. But no, no, all you want to do is attack people, because you're inept and cannot do it, because you're in darkness. See. See how that works, brethren? Now, go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, Ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety. And to the email that I read this morning from, that, from you, brother. Uh, yeah, you're right. I am also waiting for them to verbalize peace and safety, brother. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. They're saying that there's peace and safety. They haven't said, P 
peace and safety yet, like uh, like uh, our dear brother who uh, emailed me today about that. But um, things can go back to normal because uh, he got stabbed. <laughs> Then sudden destruction. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not. In, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Where it says here, and their dark sayings. See, you got the Lord in you. He will guide you into all truth. The lost don't. Obviously. Hence. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Well, and you look at verse 7, you're like, well, obviously, ah, the night associated with being in darkness, not saved. Of the devil, who is transformed into an angel of light. Yeah. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation, the blessed hope, the redemption of the purchased possession. For God hath not obtain, uh, appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope of salvation, salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Come up hither! The redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away. Erroneously referred to as the rapture. Stop using that word. Love you. And the time of Jacob's trouble, the, ja the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, the Jew, time of wrath we ain't going through that we we you and I know this those of you who ain't saved who might have made it this far who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. See, edify, build up, strengthen, encourage. Another telltale thing of someone who is false. Okay? If all they do is smile with no bitter, uh, without any like bitterness or any hard things, if they're always smiling all the time, with no rebuke or anything like that. I know of a couple people here on YouTube who are always so happy. Never anything uh, critical to say. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Or the reverse. Those who are always attacking people. Pretty good indication that they ain't what they say they is. But see, we are to comfort, edify, exhort, rebuke. Okay? Yes. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay? That's what we are to do. Not just either or. And if someone is just doing either or and not doing them both as the church of the living God ought to. You might have a falsehood on your hands there, brethren. And of course, 
Now, John chapter, 1 John chapter 1, absolutely had to come here. Absolutely had to come here. 1 John chapter 1. Of course, verses 5 on to verse 10. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. <laughs> but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from some sin. <clears throat> oh. All sin cleanseth us from all sin. Stop messing around. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember, Trump did that thing where he said, I don't ask for forgiveness. I just try to do better and be a better person. <laughs> Donald Trump's a Christian. <laughs> yes, he, yes, he is. He ain't of the church of the living God. <laughs> if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. I've hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And this is will show you your sin. This will break you down, but this will build you back up. This will rebuke you, reprove you, but it will also exhort you, teach you, instruct you because this is God's book and to truly have understanding knowledge wisdom you need the Lord otherwise a lot of these sayings are going to be dark and verse 7 in Proverbs chapter 1. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Remember how we looked at in Job, how he opens their ears to receive instruction? The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Someone who says there is no God despise the fear of the Lord and they cast his word behind their back the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but see there are people out there that can have knowledge but it says here the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge wisdom is the beginning of knowledge and what is wisdom Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And that depart from evil is understanding. Proverbs chapter 9. And we will be done. Uh, and Proverbs chapter 9. Just two verses. Proverbs chapter 9. Verses 9 and 10. Oh! Let's read verses 6 on to verse 10 in Proverbs chapter 9. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. See, fear of the Lord connected with wisdom and knowledge and instruction.
Forsake uh, Proverbs 9, verse 6 on to verse 10. Forsake the foolish, living as if there's no God, and live, and go in the way of understanding, departing from evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. Someone who refuses the fear of the Lord. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. You know, the casting your pearls before swine kind of thing. Give not wholly unto that which is dog unto dogs. Reprove a scorner. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. A scorner, someone who doesn't fear the Lord, who scorns the truth, who doesn't want to hear it, where the Lord is not at work. Okay? You are, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation, the word of reconciliation. Yes, we plant seeds. Yes. Someone who has made their choice. I know of many. Reprove not the scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, one who fears the Lord, and he will love thee. How do you take rebuke? If I'm to be rebuked, it's going to be through the scriptures. And I have been rebuked through the scriptures. Absolutely. By several, many brethren. But see, if someone is rebuked and does this, I am more than willing to repent. I am more than willing to repent. But you did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that gave that individual away right away. That's all I'm going to say about that. How do you handle rebuke? Uh, from brethren. Those of the church of the living God. Because these devils will rebuke you all day. But see, they ain't saved. They're not your brethren. But if a brother, or a sister, of course, encompassing, how do you handle that? Give instruction to a wise man, one who fears the Lord, and he will be yet wiser. And instruction, opening the ears. God opening the ear. As far as instruction, teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom, with wisdom, the fear of the Lord comes true knowledge. But see, so many out there have knowledge, but have absolutely no wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge of the holy, that which is other, separate. What is holy? To live in accordance with the scriptures. So to depart from evil, that which is of the world, is understanding. And the knowledge of the holy, knowing what is separate than, other than, is not our Lord separate from sinners? Hmm? Is he not holy? Is understanding. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hmm. Who do you fear? Man or the Lord? It shows in how we live. See, because a lot of us can be foolish. 
but you have the Lord living within you, you will be rebuked and chastened and corrected. And if you are of the church of the living God and messing around, you're in, you're in danger. So, that's going to be it for this video. And that was only, brethren, that was only seven verses and one proverb that had a total of 33 verses. <laughs> um, you know, if to those of you who have asked that, um, if the Lord one day would lead your servant onto a expository video of a proverb or whatever he would choose, wow, that would that would that would, uh, that would be like a two three part two hour thing and then this this is just off of seven verses brethren but see the fear of the lord our lord jesus christ our father and the lord is that spirit you know the holy ghost in you will guide you into all truth and that's what that's why brethren I, I, I am a very huge, huge proponent of reading a proverb a day, okay? Because I, I don't, you, I, okay, you're not going to get sympathy from me, <laughs> brethren, for you not reading the scriptures. I know people who work on farms, who have four kids, who get up early in the morning, despite everything, and spends at least a 45 minutes a day in the scriptures with four kids, farmers, with cows, you know, moo cows and horses, okay? <laughs> a father of four running a farm can get up like at two in the morning and dedicate 45 minutes of his day in the scriptures before he starts having a wife and kids and five. What? 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 Oh, you're busy. Oh, you're busy as a farmer who's making food for the nation which the Jesuits are destroying? Huh? Yeah. But if you read a proverb a day and pray, it's like, Lord, open my understanding that I may understand the scriptures. Please expound to me. That. You ask the Lord to show you truth in the scriptures? Or do you just open it up and start reading? I pray before you read the scriptures. But see, you are the church of the living God. The Lord in you. Lord, show me my sins. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You're of the church of the living God. Why aren't you in the scriptures more? You ain't, you ain't going to get sympathy from me, brother, sister, uh, if you, while you're too busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like getting up at 2.30 in the morning, you know, with four kids and the farm stuff. No, no, don't, 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 don't. Anyway, that, that's enough. That's enough. More videos are on the way, Lord willing. Lord willing. Um, as he sees fit for your servant to do, he will do. Okay? Um, I hope, hope this has kind of helped, encouraged, done. I hope, I hope you all get something from this, that the Lord shows you something from this. Um, may he be glorified. May he be met. And um, thank you, oh, <laughs> thank you to every single solitary one of you who has given. You know who you are. Without you, without our Lord doing what he has done through you, all things, all hope for us would be lost. 
And if it wasn't for many of you who have given little morsels, uh, th uh, video ideas and scriptures. You know, Paul the Apostle gives a whole thank you list in Romans chapter 16. Um, due to the fact that there are devils who watch these videos, I, I'm not going to, I can't, you know, I can't. But you know who you are. You see, you see me, right? But this ain't a one-man show, okay? It isn't. There are those of you out there who receive help from the body of Christ. Why don't you acknowledge it once in a while? Thank you to all of you. And, and, and again, brethren, I get a lot of emails, okay? If I haven't gotten to your email, <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. You know, I, 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 um, I, I stay pretty busy with that. Kind of stuff. Um, I have a whole bunch of links to uh, look at, which I, I love. I love the links. I love being sent this information. A sister sends a whole bunch of information that really keeps us both busy. <laughs> but um, yeah, th this is not a this is not a one man show. You, yeah, you only see my ugly face, <laughs> but. Um, Without the body working as one, this would never be possible. And we know that, I know that. And on to every single one of you who has prayed, who has given, who have done anything. Thank you. We love you. And not just because of what you know. You're my brother. You're my sister. I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Whenever that will be. Be soon enough. Bye-bye.